Hey, what's up everyone? It's Steven here with a video of an unboxing of the Nikon D700 full frame DSLR camera, which was originally released in July of 2008. I sold this camera back in 2021 and recently decided to purchase another one. It was located in Japan and listed as being in very good cosmetic and working condition and a shutter count of only 10,000, which I preferred. Lately, I've been wanting to shift my photography to using a camera that renders photos with a less digital looking aesthetic with great straight out of camera colors that produces images you can fondly look back on and is enjoyable to use. So the camera was packed really well, which I appreciated, and it is indeed in very good condition. It came with a fully charged EN EL3E battery, MH25 battery charger, and an official D700 camera strap. Taking photos is mainly a hobby for me, and this camera is such a great option. It's a photo only camera from a previous era of photography, which is in contrast to the current era of higher megapixel, ultra sharp hybrid shooting cameras that we have now. Conveniently, it happens to be a relatively low cost system with a lot of available lenses. It has an exceptional combination of a great user experience, build quality and image quality. The build quality is really striking on this camera. It's very robust with a magnesium alloy frame and weighs in at 2.4 pounds with a battery, and that's without a lens. I personally like a heavier camera as it provides more stability when shooting, and this one just feels really good in your hands. I'm pairing it with a Voigtlander 40mm f2 manual focus prime lens, which weighs around half a pound, bringing the total weight to just under three pounds. Despite the weight, the camera is still pretty compact compared to the Pro Nikon cameras. I really like the design of the D700. The body has curved surfaces, which are really comfortable and well thought out. It forms to the surface of your hands. I especially appreciate the curved surface on the lower left side in the front where I hold the camera up in my left palm. It's not a straight edge that can cause irritation and be a distraction when using it. The build quality produces a sense of confidence and enjoyment when you use it, and you can really feel how well it's put together. The grip fits my hand just barely and my pinky doesn't hang off, but it is a bit smaller and less deep than the D850, which is the best feeling grip I've ever tried on a camera. All the buttons are laid out really well and feel just right. Unfortunately, it doesn't have a tilting screen for lower angle shots. It does feature an optical viewfinder, which is very enjoyable and a different experience from a mirrorless electronic viewfinder. I would have preferred if auto ISO didn't have to be accessed through the menu system, but at least it does have a dedicated ISO button. The shutter sound is great and I really enjoy it, but it is loud and can attract attention. If you're not checking your photos out and menu diving, the battery lasts quite a while. Being that the sensor is 12 megapixels, the file sizes are small, which is great for the editing workflow and storage, with the raw files averaging around 13 to 14 megabytes. Overall, the camera provides a simpler photography focused experience that's a bit slower, but in a way I really like that. Sometimes limitations on a device can be a good thing. The image quality is of course great with very good color management from Nikon. I find the straight out of camera images to have pleasing rather than accurate colors and tones, which I really like. Most of the images look natural, organic, not overly sharpened and digital. They can have more of a painterly and somewhat dreamlike look to them. And that was one of my main interests in this camera. I wanted images like this that I find enjoyable to look back on over the years, not necessarily something so sharp and technically approved of, but more so artistic leaning images. 
Something that produces a feeling of nostalgia, something a little bit more vintage looking. The skin tones in the photos tend to be good as well. I actually have come to appreciate the 12 megapixels of the camera. The dynamic range is good enough and it actually exceeds 4K resolution by four megapixels and I don't print large images. I find the look of the photos to be distinct from any other camera I've used. So again, the camera has a great combination of image and build quality, a good user experience, and can deliver some unique, good looking images while being affordable. It's a great alternative to what's current and popular now and puts more emphasis on photographic technique and creativity, which I can very much appreciate. Thanks for checking out the video.